review week nine and talk about week ten in the Big South Conference schedule. Three conference games last week, another three coming up this Saturday. First, as always, our announcements before we begin and our players of the week from this past weekend. The Choice Hotel's Offensive Player of the Week was Coastal Carolina Junior Wide Receiver John Israel. The Defensive Player of the Week, Liberty Junior Defensive Lineman Chima Yuzawehi. Big South Special Teams Player of the Week was Coastal Carolina Senior Kicker Alex Katrin. And the Crons Brand Freshman of the Week, Liberty Redshirt Freshman Quarterback Stephen Masha. Congratulations to those guys on their performances this past weekend. And some other notes to pass along. Uh, Coastal Carolina has moved up in the national polls, ranking as high as number two in the coaches' poll. It's the Big South's highest ever ranking in the national top 25. And they moved up one spot in the Sports Network poll to number three. Other notes to pass along. PC, coming off its win over Mammoth, is now 4-1 and one against FCS opponents. And in those five games against FCS foes, they are averaging – for holding their opponents to an average of just 15.2 points, 1.8 touchdowns, just under 318 yards of offense, and 144 rushing yards. Uh, Blue Hills also have a plus five turnover margin in that uh, in that same time frame. Liberty held Garden Webb to minus 17 at rushing yards, which is the fewest allowed in a conference game in Big South history and the fourth lowest overall. The Flames also limited the running Bulldogs to 56 yards of offense, which is tied for the lowest single game mark in the league record books by a defensive effort. Big South continue has four, continue to have four quarterbacks uh, averaging more than 200 yards passing per game, which is currently pacing ahead of the league record. Uh, three is the record in that category. Coastal Carolina is the first Big South team to open the season 8-0 in back-to-back seasons, and it's just the third overall Eight no start in league history. Coastal Carolina quarterback Alex Ross is now tied for second in Big South history with eight three touchdown pass games, which is one away from the Big South single game uh, sing, Big South career record. Liberty quarterback Josh Woodrum uh, has thrown for a touchdown and rushed for a score in the same game at league high five times this season, and the Flames are four and one in those contests. And Saturday's TV schedule has Charleston Southern at Mammoth on ESPN3 at 1 o'clock. And big, the American Sports Network has Coastal Carolina at Gardner-Webb at 3.30 p.m. And the Big South Network will have Liberty at Presbyterian College. So this, with that, we'll go ahead and turn it over to our coaches. And our first coach, as always, is the head coach of the Runner Bulldogs. Carol McCray. Good morning, Coach. Hey, Mark. How you doing today? Uh, we're doing all right. Uh, I know the Bulldogs suffered a pretty uh, tough loss uh, at Liberty, 34 to zero. If you can open up, kind of talk about that game, some things that uh, um, really stood out to you, positively and negatively, and then uh, we'll start with questions. Well, most of the positive things happened for Coach Gill and his team, and uh, you know, anytime all the players of the week. Uh, come from a team that you've just played or you setting records in the record book for the wrong reasons. It's not a good day, Mark. I think we all know that. But uh, they did not perform very well. No, Really no positives to speak of. You know, we, we learned a big lesson. The biggest lesson we learned for our football team, I hope, is I told them after the game and I told the press up at Liberty after the game. You know, you got to – when you get in conference play in Big South Conference and, uh, you know, your first two games are Liberty and then Coastal, yeah, you really got to work to prepare for a mental and physical tough ball game. Uh, we did not do that. Uh, we showed our youth in many areas, and to be honest with you, we had some veteran players that uh, did not perform as well as I wish they would have performed because they didn't play uh, up to their ability. Now, whatever they did on our part, I mean, that's that's for us to work out. Uh, Liberty had a lot to do with that. But, um, you know, we're we're definitely in a – a growth phase right now, licking our wounds and making our preparation as uh, we get ready for Coach Mowgli and his bunch to uh, arrive here on Saturday. So a lot of work to do. I uh, did think we had some young men come out the second half and play harder and make some individual plays. Uh, we just, you know, got in a hole and did not have an opportunity to uh, work ourselves out of it. Uh, 
kind of like I said last week, my biggest concern was at the line of scrimmage, and um, <clears throat> that proved to be true. You know, they got a big, strong defensive front and a good offensive front, and um, you know, both sides of the football. That's where we have a lot of work we got to get done if we want to uh, improve and work to uh, contend in the Big South. So we continue to work here to develop the kids we got right now and uh, encourage them to be uh, much, much tougher physically and mentally in their preparation as we head into play uh, Coastal Carolina, who has now moved into, uh, I think, as you said, a number two slash three ranking. And uh, the video I've seen of them is uh, those guys are very deserving. You know, an outstanding offensive front, big and physical. I <clears throat> really like their young tailback. After having a, a pro guy back there last year, they've replaced him with a, a really quick and fast running back. <clears throat> we know about their quarterback. I've liked him since I saw him last year. You know, a, a dynamic guy that can really spin it around. And then defensively, you know, they're spearheaded by, you know, I guess one or two-time player of the year, Quinn Backus, you know, running around back there behind some really good defensive linemen. So uh, our work's cut out for us. We're certainly glad to be back in Spangler Stadium. We had not played at home in a month because of an open date, and uh, we get a great opportunity uh, in our program to open up November with uh, the highest-ranked team that uh, maybe has been in here in a long time. So great opportunity and a great challenge. That's the way we're looking at it for our football team. And we want to make sure our kids go out and really perform better than they did last week, understanding now the physical and the mental toughness it takes to challenge other guys in our conference. So a uh, good lesson learned, I hope. We'll see how much lesson we learned as we head into Saturday's contest. Thank you, Coach. At this time, we'll start taking questions. Turn <clears throat> web head coach Carol McCray. If you're asking questions, please press star 1 on your phone at any time. Or click the Q&A link near the top of your browser. Click raise hands if you join us via the web. Questions for Gardner Web head coach Carol McCray. Coach, I'll kind of lead off. Uh, talk okay. about you know a little bit um, about Coastal a little bit more. You know, last year was your first year you saw them. What yeah. similarities and differences have you noticed uh, from year one to year two? Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of similarities. I mean, certainly what what they do, they they've proven that it works. Uh, you know, I've, I've got the last year's too deep in front of me, and uh, and then this year's too deep. You know, what I see is, is some depth things that the kids that were backing up last year have moved up into some starting roles. They're able to play a lot of guys and really season their guys uh, in ball games, you know, as they made their run through the playoffs. And, uh, you know, they've, they've got some guys that have trimmed down a little bit. Some have gained some uh, muscle on them. And that's really what you want to see when you're able to redshirt some guys and get a junior-senior football team. But uh, I compliment them and what they're doing. You know, like I say, you lose a couple guys to the pros, and all of a sudden they got other guys in there that are performing very, very well. And I really like their offensive line of scrimmage. Big, strong, physical bunch up front. And, uh, you know, they can hang their hat on those guys, protect the quarterback, and get down there and be physical in the run. And, you know, that's the way we want to grow our football program. But I see a lot of similarities, see some new faces, and they've done a real good job preparing those guys and helping them understand that, uh, you know, winning is tough, even on the road. They've won some real tough ball games on the road all the way back to A&T, as well as Furman a few weeks back. And, uh, you know, coaches got them, you know, mentally, I think, prepared to finish games off. And, you know, that's what you want out of a real highly ranked team. That's what I see in these guys. And, and talking about last week, you know, as you mentioned earlier, you know, things that you need to correct. Uh, what are some of those specifics you know, in addition to the toughness that you were mentioning uh, carrying over to this week? Well, we made some mistakes mentally. We got out of spots. You know, we got out of position. And, you know, when you get out of position on pre-snap alignments and don't react when the snap of the ball takes place and you write gaps defensively, you know, then you don't give yourself a chance. You know, when you've got a good football team coming at you, you know, as an offense, you know, though those guys up there, they're, they're solid, you know, and they're too deep. They weren't real hard to find. Uh, you know, they did, you know, brought pressure on us and uh, got us in man situations up front offensively, <clears throat> uh, bringing some pressures, you know, and then rolled up there in man coverage and threw our timing off. You know, in the games we've had success, we've been able to keep our quarterback on his feet and get him in the rhythm, and we really couldn't do that. You know, when we did make a play, we shot ourselves in the foot with a negative play or a bad snap to the quarterback or a penalty or something like that. So, 
uh, you know, we didn't help ourselves. And like I say, that had some to do with our mental preparation and our attitude toward the ball game. It looked to me like after reassessing it, and it had a lot to do with them and their players and their fine football team. And my last question for you, you mentioned also you're back at home for uh, nearly a month uh, since being away from your last home game. Yeah. Uh, Coastal's bringing in a five-game road win streak. Uh, you have a five-game home win streak. Just the differences and just from the preparation and just the mental yeah. aspect of it, of playing at home, especially against the caliber of opponent. Well, not having to travel, you know, is good for our young team. You know, we're trying to certainly learn how to win at home and on the road. You know, we're in a certainly a growing phase in our program. But, uh, you know, when we came here, we said we wanted to build pride in, in our home stadium, Spangler Stadium, you know, that we could build something. We could uh, make it a tough place to play. I think our fans and our alumni have done a good job coming to games and, and supporting us. And, you know, it's our job to put a product out there that will be competitive uh, regardless of who comes in here. And, uh, you know, to me, uh, it's, it's a privilege to be able to play a team as highly ranked as Coach uh, Moglia has his team right now. And you welcome them into your stadium, and you want to make sure that you're more mentally prepared for the physical challenge ahead than you were the week prior. And, uh, you know, you hope that there's a little bit of comfort at playing at home. But, you know, that passion for the game, it has to come home and away. And really, when you look at a team like uh, Coastal, you you know, you mentioned that um, – I thought uh, watching them way back last year that one of the top things I recognize out of Coach Mowgli and his staff is that they win on the road, and more than that, they win tough, close games on the road. So I admire them for that. That's something that we want to work on. And, uh, you know, we know that uh, right now he's got his young men in a position that they realize when they get an opportunity to play, it doesn't look to me like they care if they're playing at home or away. They take pride in their program and in their team, and they play the way their coaches want them to play, tough and physical. And, uh, you know, that's what we've got to work our program into. We're certainly not there, but uh, we want to take a week-by-week -week step ahead in the right direction. All right, Coach. Thanks very much for all the questions that uh... – so we have no other to come in, so we'll let you go. I appreciate you joining us, and good luck Saturday against Colts. All right, Mark. Thanks so much. Good luck to everybody in the Big South. Thank you. Bye-bye.